let's go on to the definition of internal audit. Now, you probably know it if you're internal auditors at this point, but I'm actually going to break it down. Because I, I think the definition of internal audit from the Institute of Internal Auditors is a very good one. It has a lot of depth if you understand it, because it highlights key areas in internal audit. I've actually found that the further I go down my career as an internal auditor, the more helpful it is. Uh, I've quoted it to management, I've quoted it to boards, I've quoted it to audit committees, I've uh, brought it up in audit plans, I've brought it up, uh, it's, it's important in internal audit charters. So I really think it's worth dissecting. Now, personal view is, I don't think you understand something if you can just, you know, spit it out like a definition, you know, be able to quote it. In fact, uh, I, I'm not sure if I can quote the full definition uh, uh, by myself. Internal auditing is an independent and objective assurance and consulting function. Oh, actually I can. But let's try to break it down. So the first part of the definition starts with the two most important attributes for an internal auditor and internal audit services. And that is independence. I'm gonna take a deep breath here and just say, that is an important concept. And wait for it, objectivity, which I'm just gonna say is an important concept. Those are so important that they're directly at the beginning. Internal auditing is an independent, an objective. So it, you know, it, it starts by those concepts. That's how important they are. Uh, they are designed to add value and improve an organization's operations. They do that through providing assurance. And we're gonna see what that means, but everything will be okay. I've given you assurance. And consulting, which is not the same as selling something to someone, though it might sound like it. We aim to add value and improve an organization's operations. So let's go back to that little concept of assurance. So in fact, assurance is so intertwined with internal auditing, that I remember a um, Institute of Internal Auditors uh, event at the local uh, Luxembourg chapter. There were 40 different banking internal auditors in the room, and um, the question was brought up of, uh, you know, what do you do for consulting services? And I can tell you now, maybe this is a financial sector thing, but um, there was rather few consulting services. Now, I'm currently in a sector, luxury sector, in a company where I do a lot of that, but for many different auditors, they can go through their whole career and only look at assurance. What is assurance? So the definition of assurance can seem pretty broad, but we'll, we'll try to look at, uh, we try to look at evidence, so as an internal auditor, you know, you're, you're looking through different uh, documents, you're, you're getting interviews, um, you, you're, you're observing uh, the things that you can physically see, uh, you're, um, you know, corroborating with other people that tell you things, and um, you're also, um, you know, performing your, your own analysis, uh, you know, checking trends, uh, looking at different numbers. Okay, so you have that evidence, and you're using that for what? Well, you're using that to give an assessment. And the assessment is our way of reporting and concluding on what we found. So evidence is objectively examined to provide an independent assessment. I should say this is fully my own little way of trying to break down the complicated definitions that you find in, in a way that, okay, it's not gonna be a formal definition that covers absolutely everything, but it is the way to break it down. You, you examine evidence and you provide an independent and obviously objective assessment. And insurance engagements seek to look at the evidence without bias, objective, and 
you're supposed to do it without any undue pressure, which is, I'm, I'm going to call it nearly synonymous to independence. Now, the second type of services that we give as internal auditors is consulting. You're going to see there are some differences. So as an assurance, we aim to add value and improve an organization. But very importantly, listen, because this is important, the scope and nature of the engagement were not necessarily, not necessarily determined according to an assessment of risk. We basically don't take the means of assuring independence. We basically don't take the means of verifying risks that we would in, in an assurance engagement. Here, the nature and scope were agreed with the client. So I'd, I'd like you to just think for a second. So say someone in your organization asks you, can you do some work for me? And you know, there's no reporting line, there's, there's, there's no, you know, not, nothing really official uh, between you. Think for a second, would you be absolutely obliged to provide that service? I'll give you my own personal example. So my, my department had been asked to verify whether different operational functions around the world had actually put in place new processes. So this was out of the audit plan. But since my department was the only one able to cover this test over four continents, and here's the important thing, we accepted different consulting engagements with consultation with the audit committee, but adding it to our plan. So we tested samples in each region to see whether the new procedures had been adhered to. And I called it uh, control monitoring. Why not, you know? Our client, so here's the important thing. So in consulting, you have a client. So our client here was global compliance function. And I had agreed with the chief compliance officer on the nature and the scope of the tests that we were going to perform. And it was all formalized within an internal audit plan. This is a type of consulting engagement. It was accepted with the client. We agreed on the scope with the client. We agreed on the exact tests we did. And then you know, we, we carried it out on, on a recurring basis. Were we then, say, defining uh, the different controls to be in place? Were we you know, punishing people who didn't respect the new procedures? Absolutely not. Were we trying to modify the new procedures in place in any single way? Absolutely not. Because an important thing in consulting is that you are not allowed to assume any management responsibility. We're going to continue on the second part of the definition of internal audit. Because no, it wasn't over. Huh? Internal audit help an organization accomplish its objectives. It uses a systematic and disciplined approach whose aim is to evaluate and improve the risk management, control, and governance processes. Here you see that evaluating and improving the effectiveness of risk management, control, and governance is what internal audit does. They are the three big areas that internal auditors look at when performing internal audits. Much of the program of the CIA is based on looking at these three different areas. In fact, in our course very soon, we're going to look at those three big areas of risk management, control, governance, extremely important. And we're going to see what internal audit does in each one of them. So this is the second part of the definition. And it's very important that you see that, by definition, we use a systematic and disciplined approach. That means, well, quite frankly, for the IA, it means that we're kind of using their method. And you're going to really understand their method in part two, but also part one of the CIA. And all of that to kind of help the organization accomplish its objectives. And I just want you to pause for a second and to think why internal audit is special. Because 
okay, you know, we, we verify operations, risk management, control, governance, but you know what? Other functions can do that too. Other functions can verify risk management. Even a second level of defense, if you know that uh, particular three line of defense model. Other departments can look at controls. Say quality assurance looks at controls. Other departments can work on the governance. That's often kind of a legal secretarial, you know, company secretary uh, function. What makes internal audits special? Well, Really, there are very few things except our independence, our objectivity, and our systematic and disciplined approach. The principles we follow, the ethics we follow, this is the only difference. I mean, sorry, there are a few more, but these are the main differences and what makes internal audit special compared to quality assurance, legal and compliance, you know, all of those other things. This is why internal audit is different. And I'd say that above absolutely everything, it's that, well, quite frankly, we're independent and we're objective.